live. We are live. Hey guys, so we are doing TikTok live and YouTube live because YouTube records it. So I will be looking possibly at two screens just FYI. <laughs> but I do this so people can watch it back later if they can't come to the live or they miss like half of it. So, um, hey everyone. <laughs> so I'll give everyone like a few minutes to get on and stuff. Um, but this thing is in the way. We're going to be doing a study on um, the book of Jasher, which is in the Apocrypha. Um, this is you, my Apocrypha, the complete Apocrypha. There's, I think, different ones. So I can't vouch for like translation and stuff of all of them. But yeah. Um, and this is going to be like part one of the study because the book is very long. So there is definitely no way we're going to get it all done in one video. So we'll do it in sections because I know a lot of y'all don't have probably the book of Jasher. So I'm going to read very detailed. Um, so we're going to do like a typical Bible study where I will read sections that way. If you don't have one, you're not like missing stuff because you don't, you don't have it in front of you. Um, book of Jasher. It's in the Apocrypha. Um, I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, let's. So the reason it's in there, let me find out real quick. Let me find the page one of it. Here it is. Okay. So the Sefer HaYashar, or the Book of Jasher, uh, first edition, 1552, is a Hebrew midrash, also known as the Toledot Adam or Debra HaYamin. The Hebrew title may be translated to Book of Correct Record, but is known in English translation mostly as the Book of Jasher, following English tradition. The book is named after the Book of Jasher mentioned in Joshua and in 2 Samuel, although it is presented as the original Book of Jasher in translations such as that of Moses Samuel 1840. Um, rabbinical Judaism does not accept it as such, nor does original Hebrew text make such a claim. Um, basically, they just don't have enough info to confirm that. So what's interesting is when you read it, um, nothing contradicts scripture. So at least from uh, this part one of the study, you know, they're, like I said, it's very big. So when we get to other parts, there may be things, but I will let you know as we go on. Um, like I said, I am uh, recording this on YouTube too, so you can go back to it if needed. Um, so yes, I am going to go real quick to scripture, um, to Second Samuel and to Joshua to the parts we were just speaking about um, where it mentions the book. So, let me pull that up real quick. So, 2 Samuel 1, verse 18 is going to be uh, where we first see this in scripture mentioned. And it is David's song for Saul and Jonathan. Um, let's open it up all the way. Okay. And then David took up his lament for Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the sons of Judah be taught the song of the bow. And it is written in the book of Jasher. And then it proceeds to go in with part of a song. O daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed in scarlet and luxury, who decked your garments in ornaments of gold. Jonathan lies slain in your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were delightful to me. Your love was extraordinary, surpassing the love of a woman. However, the mighty have fallen. The weapons of war have perished. And I skipped some stuff in there. That's just like a little synopsis there. Um, and then we also have the book of Joshua mentioned in Joshua 10, verse 13. So let's go to that. 
So the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance upon its enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There have been no day like it before or since when the Lord listened to the voice of a man because the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all of Israel to camp of Gilgah. So my, the news is up, so I definitely didn't stop doing news. It's, it's every day. Um, yes, moved back. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Um, now, the book of Dasher, at least part one, you're going to see, I mean, the whole book, but it's very long. Um, the reason it's called the book of the correct record is you're going to see real quick when I start reading it that it lines up with scripture, but you get a lot of details that you don't get in Genesis about certain stories like Noah and all of that. So I'm going to start reading. And when I find something specific that I want to point out, um, I will stop and go. And then, um, like I said, we're going to go slow. So part one, so that uh, if you don't have the book in front of you, you're still getting the full verses and everything. So Enoch is mentioned in the book of Jasher too. So it's really interesting. And I want you to listen because a lot of people think Enoch is one of the two witnesses. Um, his role in it all sounds a little different than two witnesses. Um, so you will see that. Uh, Still very important role, my bad, but just you're gonna see who he compares to a little bit. Okay, chapter one. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And God created man in his own image. And God formed man from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul endowed with speech. And the Lord said, is it not good for man? To, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took away one of his ribs and he built flesh upon it and formed it and brought it to Adam. And Adam awoke from his sleep and behold, a woman was standing before him. And he said, this is a bone of my bones and it, and it will be called woman for this has been taken from man. And Adam called her name Eve, for she was the mother of all living. And God blessed them and called their names Adam and Eve in the day that he created them, which we know is the sixth day. And the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the Lord God took Adam and his wife and he placed them in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And he commanded them and said unto them, from every tree of the garden you may eat, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you will not eat. For in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. And when God had blessed and commanded them, he went from them. And Adam and his wife dwelt in the garden according to the command which the Lord had commanded them. And the serpent which God had created with them in the earth came to them to incite them to transgress the command of God. Okay, notice, obviously, it goes along with Genesis, like, to a T. Um, but notice the wording here, okay? So, it's still the same, it's exactly what the serpent's doing, but specifically mentioning transgressing the command of God, okay? Which he had commanded them. And the serpent enticed and persuaded the woman to eat from the tree of knowledge. And the woman hearkened to the voice of the serpent. And she transgressed the word of God and took from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and she ate. And she took from it and gave it to her husband also, and he ate. And Adam and his wife transgressed the command of God, which he commanded them. And God knew it, and his anger was kindled against them, and he cursed them. And the Lord God drove them that day from the Garden of Eden to unto the ground from which they were taken, and they went and dwelt at the east of the Garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife, and she bore two sons and three daughters. And she called 
the name of the firstborn Cain, saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord, and the name of the other she called Abel. For she said, In vanity we came into earth, and in vanity we will be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land. And Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. And it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought the approximating offering to the Lord, and Cain brought from the fruit of the ground. And Abel brought from the firstlings of the flock, from the fat thereof, and God turned and inclined to Abel and his offering. And a fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. And unto Cain and his offering the Lord did not turn, and he did not incline to it. For he had brought from inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And in some time after, Cain and Abel his brother went one day into the field to do their work. And they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing his ground, and Abel feeding his flock. And the flock passed that part which Cain had plowed in the ground, and it sorely grieved Cain on his account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger, and he said to him, What is there between me and you that you come, dwell and bring your flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain and said unto him, What is there between me and you that you will eat the flesh of my flock and clothe yourself with their wool? And now thereof pull off the wool of my sheep, which you have clothed yourself and recompense me for the fruit and flesh which you have eaten. And when you will have done this, I will then go from your land as you have said. And Cain said to his brother Abel, Surely if I slay you this day, who will require your blood from me? And Abel answered Cain saying, Surely God who has made us in the earth will avenge my cause and he will require my blood from you. Should you slay me for the Lord is the judge and the arbiter and it, and it is he who will pay back man according to his evil and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon the earth. And now if you should slay me here, surely God knows your secret views and will judge you for the evil in which you have did declare to do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words of Abel, his brother, had that he had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was killed against his brother and Abel for declaring this thing. And, Clay, and Cain hastened and rose up and took an iron part of his plowing instrument with which he suddenly smote his brother and he slew him. And Cain spilt the blood of Abel, streamed upon the earth, and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. So in front of the flock. Um, and after that, Cain repented, okay, having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved. He wept over him, and it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field, where he put his brother's body, and he turned dust over it. And then the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother, and the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel your brother that was with you? And Cain concealed his true motives and said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out unto me from the ground where you slain him. For you have slain your brother and you have concealed your intentions before me and did imagine in your heart that you saw that I saw you not nor knew all your actions. But you did this thing and did slay your brother for the reason and because he spoke rightfully to you, and now thereof, cursed, cursed be you from the ground in which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand, and wherein you did bury him. And it will be when you will till it, it will no more be given you its strength, as in the beginning, for thorns and thistles will grow and produce, and you will be moving wandering in the earth until the day of your death. And at that time, Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, from the presence where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land toward the east of Eden. 
him and all belonging to him. And Cain knew his wife, and in those days she conceived and bore a son, and he was called Enoch, saying, In that time the Lord began to give him rest and quiet in the earth. And at that time Cain also began to build a city, and he built the city in which he called the name of the city Enoch, according to the name of his son. For in those days the Lord had given him rest upon the earth, and he did not move about and wonder as in the beginning. And Ired was born to Enoch, and Ired begot um, Makula, and Makula begot Methuselah. Okay, that's chapter one. So as you can see, it goes parallel with Genesis, although we see a conversation between Cain and Abel that we don't really get in Genesis, right? Um, no, Enoch is not bad, and you're about to see uh, just how good he is. <laughs> because you don't get that in the Bible. You get that he... Uh, lived 365 years, and he walked with God 300 years, and then he um, was taken. That's all you get in the Bible of him. However, you get a little bit more here, which you're about to see in chapter two. And it was in the 113th year of the life of Adam upon the earth that he again knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore a son in his likeness and in his image. And she named him Seth, saying, because God has appointed me another seed in place of Abel, for Cain has slain him. And Seth lived 105 years when he begot a son and Seth named him Enosh saying because in that time the sons of men began to multiply and afflict their souls and hearts by transgressing and rebelling against God and it was in the days of Enosh that the sons of men continued to rebel and transgress against God to increase the anger of the Lord and against the sons of men and the sons of men went and they served other gods and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth. And in those days, the sons of men made images of brass and iron, wood and stone. So interesting note, uh, brass and iron, whereas later in scripture, it's gold and silver. Still wood and stone also, but uh, different metals. And they bowed down and served them. And every man made his God and they bowed down to them. And the sons of men forsook the Lord all the days of Enosh and his children. And the anger of the Lord was kindled on account of their works and their abominations, which they did in the earth. And the Lord caused the waters of the river of Gihon to overwhelm them. And he destroyed and consumed them. And he destroyed one third part of the earth. And now withstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways. And their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And in those days was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. And there was no food for the sons of men. So famine was very great in those days. And the seed which they sowed in those days in the ground became thorns, thistles, and briars. For from the days of Adam was this declaration concerning the earth of the curse of God. And he cursed the earth on account of the sin of which Adam sinned before the Lord. So I want to note something. Um, with Eve, right? Yes, men are the head of the household. So that is part of the aspect. But why does it seem like God is so much angrier at Adam than he is at Eve? My personal opinion, I can't prove this, obviously. Um, my personal opinion is when you look at scripture and you look at certain people that God is angry at, um, Notice how Adam blames Eve. He doesn't admit his faults where Eve admits her fault. Okay. Right there. That is the aspect which you see with Cain. Cain repents in this, right? In this book. Now, again, this is not scripture verbatim, but it's not going against what scripture says, not contradictive. Um, so if he's repent, you know, repentant of it, you know, he still has a punishment for what he did, but it's when he goes back and then he basically lies to God, right? He does not admit his fault to God. Um, so there's that. Okay. Um, and it was where men continue to rebel and transgress against God and to corrupt their ways that the earth also became corrupt. And Enosh lived 90 years and he begot Canaan. Canaan. It's like basically Cain with an A-N at the end also. And Cannon grew up and he was 40 years old when he became wise and had knowledge and skill in all wisdom. I'm making a point here.
to mention this because uh, Revelation 13, here is wisdom. So pay attention to who's got wisdom, okay? And Canaan has a lot of it. Knowledge and skill in all wisdom. And he reigned over all the sons of men and he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge. For Canaan was a very wise man and had understanding in all wisdom. And with his wisdom, he ruled over the spirits and demons. And Canaan knew by his wisdom that God would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon the earth and that the Lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood. And in those days, Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone and it was to take place in the time to come. And he put them in his treasuries. Sounds an awful lot like what Moses does, right? And Canaan reigned over the whole earth, and he turned some of the sons of men to the service of God. And when Canaan was 70 years old, he begot three sons and two daughters. So kind of the opposite of Adam uh, before they had Seth, right? So they had two sons, three daughters, and this is three sons, two daughters. And these are the names of the children of Canaan. The name of the firstborn, Mahalalah, the second, Enon, and the third, Medrid. And their sisters were Ada and Zillah. Okay, which they're in scripture. There are five children of Canaan that were born to him. And Lamech, the son of Methuselah, became related to Canaan by marriage. And he took his two daughters for his wives. And Ada conceived and bore uh, a son to Lamech. And she called the name Jabal. And she conceived and bore a son. And his name was Jubal. And Zillah, her sister, was barren in those days and had no offspring. For in those days, the sons of men began to trespass against God and to transgress his commandments again, which he had commanded to Adam to be fruitful and to multiply the earth. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a drought that would render them barren in order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance may not fade. And when the sons of men caused some of their wives to drink, Zillah drank with them. And the childbearing woman appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands as widows, while their husbands lived, for to the barren ones only they were attached. Very interesting wording, huh? And barren ones only, or sorry, and in the days of, in the end of days and years, when Zillah became old, the Lord opened her womb and she conceived and bore a son and she called him to Cain, saying, after I had withered away, I have obtained him from the almighty God. And she conceived again and uh, bare a daughter and she called her name Nama. For she said, after I had withered away, I have obtained pleasure and delight. And Lamech was old and advanced in years and his eyes were dim so he could not see. And to Cain, his son was leading him and it was one day that Lamech went into the field and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And while they were walking in the field, Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them. For Lamech was very old and could not see very much. And Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow. And with the arrows, he smote Cain, uh, who was yet far off. And he slew him, for he appeared to them as an animal. And the arrows entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them, and he fell to the ground and died. Okay. So according to this book, who gets the curse for killing Cain? Okay. Lamech and his son, Tubal Cain. And the Lord paid back Cain's evil according to his wickedness, which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. And it came to pass when Cain had died that Lamech and Tubal went to see the animal which they had slain. And after they saw and behold, Cain, their grandfather, was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lamech was very much grieved having done this. And in clapping his hands together, he struck his son and caused death. And the wives of Lamech heard that what Lamech had done, and he sought to kill him, and they sought to kill him. So remember in scripture where Lamech tells his wives, I have slain a guy, and it doesn't mention who. Well, you know, this is, again, it's just giving more detail um, to that. And the wives of Lamech hated him from that day because he slain Cain and Tubal Cain, and the wives of Lamech separated from him and would not hearken to him in those days. And Lamech came to his wives, and he pressed 
them to listen about this matter. And he said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, O wives of Lamech, attend to my words. For now you have imagined, and you said that I slew a man with my wounds and a child with my stripes, for they have done no violence, but surely know that. I am old and gray headed and my eyes are heavy through age. And I did this thing unknowingly and the wives of Lamech listened to him on this matter. And they returned to him with the advice of their father, Adam, but they bore no children to him from that time, knowing that God's anger was increasing in those days against the sons of men. Sorry, the light was going out there. Um, to destroy them with the waters of the flood for their evil doings. And Mahala, the son of Canaan, lived 65 years, and he begot Jared. And Jared lived 62 years, and he begot the second Enoch. Um, let's see. Does it matter? Government comes. Okay. So um, we're going to keep going. I'm going to have this open here. Um, okay, so now we're on chapter three. It's going to get really good here in a minute. Um, this is still leading up very much following Genesis, just a little more detail here and there. Um, but then you're going to get chapter three is a lot about Enoch. So <clears throat> let's try not to lose my place back here. Okay. And Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after having begot Methuselah. And he served the Lord and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord, in knowledge and in understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men and secreted himself from them for many days. And it was at the expiration of many years while he was serving the Lord and praying before him in his house that the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Rise, go out from your house and from the place where you go hide yourself and appear to the sons of men in order that you may teach them the way in which they should go and the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of God. And Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord and went out from his house from his place and from the chamber in which he was concealed. And he went to the sons of men and taught them the ways of the Lord. And at that time assembled the sons of men and acquainted them with the instruction of the Lord. And he ordered it and proclaimed it into all the places where the sons of men dwelt, saying, Where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to the word of the Lord. And they came and bowed to him, and they heard his word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear all his wisdom. So it sounds a lot like Solomon, right? Um, I mean, he sounds like, Enoch sounds like everybody. You're about to find out. But, like, first we get kind of like a Moses feel, right? Because he's teaching instruction and he has wisdom from God. Then we start to get a feel of Solomon and his wisdom and everyone coming to him. And all the sons, all the kings and sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard his wisdom. And they bowed down to him. And they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all 130 kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them. And they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge in all the ways of the Lord. And he made peace among them. And peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men 243 years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Methuselah, Elisha, and Emelech, three sons, and their sisters were Melchah and Nama. And Methuselah lived 87 years, and he begot Lamech. And it was the 56th year of the life of Lamech that Adam died. 
930 years old was when uh, he was at his death and his two sons with Enoch and Methuselah, his son, buried him with great pomp and the burial of the kings in the cave, which God had told them. Mind you, a lot of people are buried in caves. Um, Sarah and Abraham buried in caves also. Um, and in that place of all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. And it has therefore become a custom among the sons of men to this day that Adam died because he ate from the tree of knowledge and he and his children after him, as the Lord God had spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the 243rd year of the reign of Enoch. In that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men and to secret himself as at first in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secret himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men for three days. And then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God. In the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord. And all they asked him about the Lord, he told them. And he did this in the manner for many years. And he afterward concealed himself for six days. And he appeared to him his people one day in seven. And after that, once in a month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and men sought for him and desired again to see his face and to see the face of Enoch and to hear his word. But they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance, on his face, essentially, is what it's saying. Therefore, no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble to the sons of men and to come to Enoch, thinking that they might all speak to him at the time when he should come out among them. And they did so. And the day came when Enoch went out, and they all assembled and came to him. And Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught wisdom and knowledge. And they bowed down before him, and he said, May the king live. Or they said, May the king live, may the king live. And in some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them in the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called on to Enoch from heaven and wished to bring him up to heaven and to make him reign there over the sons of God. Not sons of men this time, sons of God, angels. And he had reigned over the sons of men upon earth. When at that time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth and taught them wisdom and knowledge and gave them divine instructions. And he said to them, I have been required to ascend into heaven. I therefore do not know the day of my going. Okay. Opposite of Jesus, the day of Jesus is coming. He does not know the day. Interesting, huh? And also the three days. Concealing as long as three days. Another note there. And now, therefore, I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and I will give you instruction before I leave you. How to act upon the earth whereby that you may live, and he did so, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and he gave them instruction, and he reproved them, and he placed before them statutes and judgments to do upon the earth, and he made peace among them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time teaching them all these things. At that time the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of the great horse descended from heaven and the horse paced in the air and they told Enoch what they had seen and Enoch said to them on my account does this horse descend upon earth the time is come when I must go from you I will no more be seen by you and the horse descended at that time and stood before Enoch and all the sons of men were with Enoch saw him and Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delights to know the ways of Lord his God? And let him come this day to Enoch before he is taken from us. 
And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day. And all the kings of the earth, where the princes and counselors remained with him that day. And Enoch taught his sons, taught, sorry, the sons of men wisdom and knowledge and gave them divine instruction. And he commanded them to serve the Lord and walk all the ways and all the days of their lives. And he continued to make peace among them. And it was after this that he rose and rode upon the horse and he went out and all the sons of men went after him about 800,000 men and they went with him one day's journey. And the second day he said unto them, return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. And some of the men went with him and those who remained went on a six days journey and Enoch said to them every day, return to your tents, lest you may die. But they were not willing to return, and they went with him. And on the sixth day, some of the men remained and clung to him. And they said to him, we will go with you to the place where you go. As the Lord lives, death only will separate us. And they urged so much to go with him that he ceased speaking to them. And they went after him and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused a census to be taken, is a census, in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind with horses and chariots of fire, just like Elijah, right? Mind you, Elisha did, Elijah did the very same thing with Elisha saying, I'm going here. And Elisha's like, I'm coming with you, right? As these men. And on the eighth day, all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he ascended into heaven. And all those kings went to the place where they found the earth there filled with snow. And upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, come, let us break through the snow and see perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead. And now under the stones of snow, and they searched, but could not find them, for he had ascended into heaven. So that's chapter three. So then we got chapter four. But do we see um, now, like, the way that this is speaking of Enoch, you get a whole lot more um, about Enoch and his character and his relationship with God and everything. Um, not quite as mysterious. I mean, still mysterious, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like, literally, like I said, you get two, two, three things in scripture about Enoch, and that's it, and this, you get a, a lot more um, for that, so um, we're going to move on to chapter four. I'm checking the time, because I'm not going to make this a super, super long, like I normally do. I usually make, like, four-hour Bible studies. Um, chapter four, in all the days that Enoch lived upon earth, there were 365 years, matches the Bible, right? And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of the earth rose and took Methuselah, his son, and anointed him. Okay, Methuselah was anointed. And they caused him to reign over them in place of his father. And Methuselah acted uprightly in the sight of God, and his father Enoch had taught him. And he likewise, during the whole of his life, taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge and fear of God. And he did not turn from them in the uh he did not turn from the good way either to the right or to the left but in the latter days of methuselah the sons of men turned from the lord they corrupted the earth they robbed and plundered each other and they rebelled against god and they transgressed okay transgressed his law and they corrupted their ways and they would not hearken to the voice of methuselah but they rebelled against him, and the Lord was exceedingly angry against them. And the Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. For when they sowed the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support, behold, thorns and thistles were produced, and they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended to do evil in the sight of God. And they provoked the Lord with their evil ways. And the Lord was very angry and repented that he ever made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them. And he did so. In those days when Lamech, the son of Methuselah, 
was 160 years old, Seth, the son of Adam, had died. And all the days of Seth that he lived were 912 years, and he died. And Lamech was 180 years old when he took Ashuma, the daughter of Elisha, the son of Enoch, his uncle, and she conceived. And at that time, the sons of men sowed sowed the ground, and little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lamech conceived and bore a son at that time at the revolution of the year. And Methuselah called his name Noah, saying, The earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption. And Lamech, his father, called the name Menachem, saying, this one, this one will comfort us in our works and miserable toil in earth, which God had cursed. And the child grew up and was weaned, and he went the ways of his father Methuselah, perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days. And they multiplied upon the face of the earth, the sons and daughters, and they taught one another evil practices. And they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto, unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relative. And they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air. Tell me we ain't in the days of Noah when I'm about to read this next verse. And taught the mixture of animals from one species with another in order that they will provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth was corrupt for flesh had corrupted the ways upon earth and all men and all animals. Uh, aren't they like totally mixing animals in the labs right now? I mean, they're putting pig hearts in humans and I mean, very much days of Noah guys, very much. Um, I will, the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle beast um, of the field. For I repented that I had made man. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought evil upon man, which he had declared, for this was from the Lord. And they should not see evil, which the Lord spoke concerning of the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord chose him and his children to raise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. So notice how we have two groups of people here, okay? Because before, we just know about Noah, right? Um, and we know, I mean, again, still correlates with Noah. However, all the people who follow God died before so that they wouldn't see the evil. Um, so there's that. Now we're on chapter five. And it was in the 84th year of the life of Noah that Enoch, the son of Seth, died. And he was 905 years old um, at his death. This is the second Enoch. Um, and in the 179th year of the life of Noah, Canaan, the son of Enosh, died. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years. And he died. And 234th year of the life of Noah, Mahala, the son of Canaan, died. And in the days of Mahala, there were 895 years, and then he died. And then Jared, and I'm going to kind of skip through because it just gives the years and stuff, which I know have meaning, but uh, very, very hard to figure out. And all of those who followed the Lord died in those days before they saw the evil which God declared upon the earth. And after the lapse of many years, in 480th year of the life of Noah, when all the those men who followed the Lord had died away from among the sons of men, and only Methuselah was then left. God said unto Noah and Methuselah, saying, Speak ye and proclaim to the sons of men, saying, Thus says the Lord, Return from your evil ways and forsake your works, and the Lord will repent of the evil that has declared you to do. Or to do to you, so that you will that it will not come to pass. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years. If you will return to me and forsake your evil ways, then I will also turn away from the evil in which I told you, and it will not exist, says the Lord. And Noah said to Methuselah, 
and spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. And the Lord granted them a period of 120 years, saying, if they will return, uh, then God will repent of the evil, and so as not to destroy the earth. Noah, the son of Lamech, refrained from taking a wife in those days, and he begot children, for he said, surely now God will destroy the earth. Why then will I beget children? And Noah was a just man, and he was perfect in his generation. And the Lord chose him to raise up seed from his seed and upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto your wife and beget children, for I have seen your righteousness before me in this generation. And you will raise up seed and your children with you in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Nama, the daughter of Enoch, and he or, and she was 580 years old, and Noah was 498 years old. She's older than him. And he took Nama for a wife. Not that that matters. That just think it's funny. And Nama conceived and bore a son, and he named him Japheth. And saying, God has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again and bore a son, and she named him Shem, saying, God has made me a remnant to raise up seed in the midst of the earth. And Noah was 502 years old when Nama bared Shem, Shem, and the boys grew up and went in the ways of the Lord. In all, Methuselah and Noah, their father, taught them. And Lamech and his father, Lamech, the father of Noah, died in those days, yet verily he did not go with all his heart in the ways of his father. And he died in the 195th year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Lamech were 770 years, and he died. And all the sons of men who knew the Lord died in that year before the Lord brought evil upon them, for the Lord willed them to die, so as not to behold the evil that God would bring upon their brothers and relatives as he had so declared to do. In that time, the Lord said to Noah and Methuselah, Stand out and proclaim to the sons of men all the words I spoke to you in those days. Perhaps many will turn away from their evil ways, and I will then repent of evil, and I will not bring it. And Noah and Methuselah stood out and said in the ears of the sons of men, all the God had spoken concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken, neither would they incline the ears to all their declarations. And it was after this that the Lord said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me on account of their evil deeds. And behold, I will destroy the earth. So take on to you, go for wood and go to a certain place and make a large ark and place in that spot. Thus, um, sorry, and thus will you make it 300 cubits length, you know, same description. So I'm going to skip that. Um, and behold, I will bring the flood waters upon the earth and all flesh will be destroyed from under the heavens. All that is upon the earth will perish. And you and your household will go and gather two couple of all living things, male and female, and will bring them into the dark ark to raise up seed from them upon the earth and gather onto you all food that is eaten by all the animals that you may, that there may be food for you and for them. And you will choose for your sons, three maidens from three daughters of men, and they will be wives for your sons. And Noah rose up and he made an ark in the place where God had commanded him. And Noah did what he ordered. And in 595th year, Noah um, commenced making the ark, and he made the ark in five years, as the Lord commanded. And Noah took three daughters, um, Echelam, the son of Methuselah, for wives, the daughters of Echelam, um, for wives and sons. And the Lord commanded Noah, and it was at that time Methuselah, the son of Enoch, died 960 years old at his death. And then we have chapter six after that, but I'm going to pause for a moment. So, so what are we thinking so far? I don't know if y'all have ever read Book of Joshua yet. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, it says they die, but they are, which always made sense to me, like, to not see the evil that's happening because we know, unfortunately, a lot of our people we know and our loved ones are not going to be saved, right? And so, you know, like, 
to see that. Like, so it, it makes sense, right? Um, very much the rapture aspect here. I've thought of this before. Um, now we know there are people alive, right? Because it specifically says the dead first and then those who are alive, right? So we also see this Noah. Noah represents the remnant, right? That stays on earth. Uh, the righteous, which is the 144,000. He's That's what he's representing um, because it's specifically family of, right? It's like the 12 tribes essentially of the 144,000. That's the remnant. They're protected. I'm going to read chapter six because it's going to get really interesting in terms of all that also. Um, but I thought about this with the rapture and why people wouldn't like believe at a rapture that would believe if a bunch of people disappeared is because I don't necessarily think disappearing is a thing. Like your soul and being transformed into a heavenly body might be a thing, but the fleshly body does not go. And so it's just going to be like a mass, it's going to look like a mass death, in my opinion. And people are just going to think a bunch of people died over it or something. That's very much something I've considered uh, even prior to reading this. Uh, not saying that's guaranteed. That's just something I've thought. Um, this does say five years to build the ark. But it does say, it does talk about 120 years um, preparing people, essentially. So it kind of goes with scripture in that regard, because it talks about God, uh, being with me in 120 years. So they kind of give me like a, a two witnesses feel right here with Noah and Methuselah preaching to everybody, um, before things go down. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I have no problem doing this with you guys. The word is good. Yeah, it could be. I mean, Oh, we don't know yet, but let's go to chapter six here. Okay. At the time after the death of Methuselah, the Lord said to Noah, go you with your household into the ark. Behold, I will gather you all the animals of the earth, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and they will all come and surround the ark. This part's in here. Interesting. So I'm saying, um, this is not scripture. Okay. There's things that aren't in scripture that they don't talk about. So you can't really confirm in that regard. Okay. But there isn't anything disproving the book of Jasher. All it says is that rabbinical Judaism does not see it as the original book necessarily, but they don't have the original book. Does that make sense? So they just don't know. It's kind of like Enoch, right? Like they kind of feel that's why it's not in the Bible. Um, but it is mentioned in the Bible, as we mentioned earlier. And you will go and seat yourself by the doors of the ark. Um, and all the beasts of the animals, fowls will assemble and place themselves before you. Um, and such of them will come to you and crouch before you. Will you take and deliver onto the hands of your sons who will bring them to the ark and all will stand before you and you will leave. And the Lord brought this about. So I thought that part, this part's interesting that it talks about animals crouching by the door of the ark. The next day, all animals, beast, fowl came in great multitudes and surrounded the ark. And Noah went and seated himself by the door of the ark. And all of the flesh that crouched before him, he brought into the ark. And all stood before him and left upon the earth. And a lioness came and her two whelps, male and female. And the three crouched before Noah. And the two whelps rose up against the lioness and smote her. And she fled from her place and she went away and they returned to their places and crouched upon the earth before Noah and the lioness ran away and stood in the place of the lions and Noah saw this and wondered greatly and he rose and took the two whelps and brought them into the ark and Noah brought into the ark from all the living creatures um, that were upon the earth so that was none left but which Noah brought into the ark two by two and two came to Noah into the ark and from the clean animals and the clean fowls, he brought seven couples. So see, still matching with scripture here. And God had command, as God had commanded him, and all the animals, beast, fowls were still there. And they surrounded the ark at every place. And the rain had not descended until seven days after. Still matches up with scripture. 
And on that day, the Lord caused the whole earth to shake and the sun darkened and the foundations of the world raged and the whole earth was moved violently and the lightning flashed and the thunder roared and all the fountains of the earth were broken up, such as was not known to the inhabitants before. And God did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men that there might be no more evil upon the earth. And still the sons of men would not return from their evil ways. So we can see how this is going to go, right? In the end. <laughs> and they increased the anger of the Lord at that time and did not even direct their hearts to all this. And at the end of the seven days, in the 600th year of the life of Noah, the waters of the flood were upon the earth. And all the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the window of heaven, the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Noah and his household and all the living creatures that were with them came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and the Lord had shut them in. And all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on account of the rain, for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth, and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark and the sons of men assembled together 700,000 men and women and they came unto Noah to the ark and they called to Noah saying open for us so that we may come to you in the ark and why will we die and Noah with a loud voice answered them from the ark saying have you not rebelled against the Lord and said that he does not exist and therefore the Lord brought upon you this evil to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. Is not this the thing that I spoke to you of 120 years back? And you would not hearken to the voice of the Lord. And now you desire to live upon the earth. And they said to Noah, we are ready to return to the Lord. Only open for us that we may live and not die. Notice how it's too late. <laughs> and Noah answered them saying, Behold, now that you see trouble of your souls, you wish to return to the Lord. Why did you not return during these 120 years, which the Lord God granted you to determine this period? But now you come to tell me on this account of the troubles of your souls. Now also the Lord will not listen to you, neither will he give an ear to you on this day, so that you will not now succeed in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in on account of the rain, and they could not bear the rain upon them. And the Lord sent all the beasts of the animals that stood around the ark, and the beast overpowered them and drove them from that place. And every man went his way, and they again scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. And the rain was still descending upon the earth, and it descended forty days and forty nights, and the water prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all flesh was upon the earth, um, or in the waters had died. Whether men, animal, beast, creeping things, or birds of the air, and there were only remained Noah and those that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed and greatly increased upon the earth. And they lifted up the ark, and it raised from the earth. And the ark floated upon the face of the waters, and it tossed upon the waters so that all the living creatures within turned about like pottage in a cauldron. The great anxiety seized all the living creatures and they were in the ark and the ark was like, was like to be broken. So they were scared that it was going to break. And all the living creatures that were in the ark were terrified. The lions roared and the oxen's load and the wolves howled and every living creature in the ark spoke and lamented in its own language so that their voices reached to a great distance. And Noah and his sons cried and wept in their troubles, and they were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death. And Noah prayed unto the Lord and cried unto him on account of this. And he said, O Lord, help us, for we have no strength to bear this evil that has encompassed us, for the waves of the waters have surrounded us mischievous torrents that have terrified us and the snares of death that have come before us. You notice how the waters sound a lot like uh, evil people and stuff. Answer us, O Lord. Answer us. Light up your continents toward us. Again, same as Enoch's face, right? Um, and great, be gracious to us. Redeem us and deliver us. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah and the Lord remembered him. 
and the wind passed over the earth and the waters were stilled and the ark rested. That goes with uh, uh, Jesus in the boat, right? Uh, when they were crying out to Jesus and he woke up and he stilled the waters. And the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain of heaven was restrained and the waters decreased in those days and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. And Noah then opened the window of the ark and Noah still called out to the Lord. And at that time he said, O Lord, who did from the earth and from the heavens and all therein bring out of our souls from this confinement and from the prison wherein you have placed us. For I am much wearied with sighing. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah and said to him, when, when you will have completed a full year, then you will go out. And at the revolution of the year, when the full year completed and Noah's dwelling in the ark, the waters were dried from the earth. And Noah pulled, which this all goes with scripture also, he was in the ark year, put off the covering of the ark. And at that time, on the 27th day of the second month of the earth was dry, but Noah and his sons were with him. They did not go out from the ark until the Lord told them. And the day came when the Lord told them to go out, and they went out from the ark. And when they returned every one of his ways to his place, and Noah and his sons dwelt in the land that God told them, and they served the Lord all their days. And the Lord blessed Noah and his sons on their going out from the ark. And he said that them be fruitful, fill the earth, become strong and increase abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Okay, that was the end of chapter six. So I think that is probably a good stopping place. Unless y'all really want me to go on longer. I can go on a little bit longer, uh, but it's been an hour. So um, uh, hello. So, like I said, um, let me see how many chapters in the book of Joshua are here total, because this is going to be multiple part study for that reason. It is a super long book. I don't think it's quite as long as Isaiah, but oh, I take that back. It is. Um, there's 91 chapters and we're on chapter six. <laughs> so, again, be multiple parts. But, yeah, it's like one third of this book of the whole apocryphal book. So, Good day from Australia. Hello. Ah, so chapter seven, I'm not going to read it, but it goes into, um, it goes into, you know, now they're off the ark, right? And they're starting to go into the land. So it goes into Noah and his sons and I'm going to skip a huge part of that. I'm going to be honest, because that just goes into like all the generations like uh, Genesis does. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read chapter seven and we'll finish there. So these are the sons of Shem. So I'm going to skip a bunch of generations. According to the families and their numbers in those days, there were 300 men. These are the generations of Shem. Shem begot some people, I'm not going to say, <laughs> um, the name of one was Peleg, and in his day, the sons of men were divided. And in the latter days, the earth was divided. And the name of the second was Yoktan. And Yoktan, meaning that his days, the lives of the sons of men were diminished and lessened. These are the sons of Yoktan, and then it names his sons. And Peleg, his brother, begot Yen, and Yen begot Surug, and then, you know, Nahor and all that. Um, and then Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noah, took a wife in those days in his old age, and she bore a son. So, again, going through all that. Um, and the garments of the skin which God made for Adam and his wife when they went out of the garden were given to Cush. For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Jared. And when Enoch was taken up to God, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And at that time... The death of Methuselah, Noah took them and brought them into the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in that going out, Ham stole those garments and Noah from his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham begot his firstborn Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from the sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod... He gave them to him. So Nimrod's got these garments now. Um, garments through his 
love for him, and Nimrod grew up. And when he was 20 years old, he put on those garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put them on. And God gave him might and strength, and he was a mighty hunter in the earth. He was a mighty hunt in the field. And he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them animals before the Lord. And Nimrod strengthened brethren, and he fought the battles of his brethren against all the surrounding enemies. And the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren into his hands, and God prospered him for a time to time in his battles. And he reigned upon the earth. Therefore, it became current in those days that man ushered out those he had trained up for battle. And he would say to them, like God did to Nimrod, who was a mighty hunt in the earth, um, who succeeded in the battles and prevailed against his brethren, that he delivered them from the hands of their enemies, that may God strengthen us and deliver us this day. And when Nimrod was 40 years old, at that time there was a war between his brethren and the children of Japheth, so that they were in the power of their enemies. And Nimrod went out at that time, and he assembled all the sons of Cush and the families, about 460 men. And he hired also some men of his friends and acquaintances, about 80 of them, and he gave them their hire. And he went out to battle and he was um, on the road. Nimrod strengthened the hearts of the people that went. And he said to them, do not fear, neither be alarmed, for all our enemies will be delivered into our hands. And you may do with them as you please. And all the men that went were about 500 and they fought against their enemies, and they destroyed them, and they subdued them. And Nimrod placed standing officers over them in respective places. And he took some of their children as security, and they were all servants to Nimrod and to his brethren. And Nimrod and all his people that were with him turned homeward. And when Nimrod had joyfully returned from battle after having conquered all the enemies, all his brethren, together with those who knew him before, assembled to make him king over them, and they placed a regal crown upon his head. And he set over the subjects to his people, princes, judges, rulers, and custom among kings. And he placed Terah, the son of Nahor, the prince of his host. And he dignified him and elevated him above all princes. And while he was reigning according to his heart's desire, after having conquered all his enemies around, he advised with his countlers to build counselors to build a city in his place and they did so and they found a large valley opposite of the east opposite sorry to the east and they built him a large extensive city and Nimrod called the name of the city that he built uh Shinar or Shinar however you say it for the Lord had vermently shaken his enemies and destroyed them and Nimrod dwelt in Shinar and he reigned securely and he fought his enemies and subdued them and he prospered in all the battles, and his kingdom became very great. And all the nations and tongues heard this fame, and they gathered themselves to him, and bowed to the earth, and they brought him offerings, and they became, uh, and he became lord and king, and they dwelt all with him in the city of Shinar, and Nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of Noah, and they were under all his power and counsel. And all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. Okay. Before Tower of Babel, we know this. But Nimrod did not go in the ways of the Lord. And he was more wicked than all the men that were before him from the days of the flood unto those days. And he made gods of wood and stone and he bowed down to them. And he rebelled against the Lord and taught all his subjects and people of the earth his wicked ways. And Mardin... His son was even more wicked than his father. And everyone that heard of the acts of Mardin, the son of Nimrod, would say concerning him, from the wicked goes out wickedness. Therefore, it became a proverb in the whole earth saying, from the wicked goes out wickedness. And it was current in the words of men that in that time to this, and Terah, the son of Nahor, Prince Nimrod's host, was in those days very great in the sight of the king and his subjects. And the king and princes loved him, and they elevated him very high. And Terah took a wife, and her name was Amthalo, and the daughter of Cornebo. And the wife of Terah conceived and was bore 
to him a son in those days. And Terah was 70 years old when he begot him. And Terah called the name of his son that was born to him, Abram, aka Abraham, because the king had raised him in those days and dignified him above all his princes that were with him. So that's the end of chapter seven. So interesting, huh? Very interesting. Making a little bookmark here so we can, for part two, start where we left off. So, so, um, I'm going to say goodbye to the YouTube live real quick. Um, and just stay on here for a minute. So, um, bye YouTube. Uh, we'll see you for part two next time, which I'll try and do very soon.